Hello, friends, and a happy Stratterday. Cyberry here with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Real quick before I get rolling on this, thank you for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. We are still on our way to 1,000 subscribers. Uh, we're going to need your help getting there, so just give this channel a sub if you like my guides. Other than that, apologies, this is coming out a little bit late, still kind of having a hectic schedule. Alright, all that announcement bullshit out of the way, let's do this. Today we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Shinobi. Now apologies ahead of time, I do not have a level 0 uh, Shinobi currently. Don't really have time to sit around waiting for one to drop. Uh, so let's just go straight from the top. The release date of the Shinobi, August 19th of 2021. It was last updated October 3rd, 2021. Uh, the credits, Badger did the concept, the coding, and the balancing. Ua did the animations. Cat did the barks, and there's a thanks here for S. Purple, Anonymous Koala, and Seal, who made the original Raiju a Sunward Isles add-on, uh, where this character comes from. So let's just dive straight into the base stats here. Uh, the max HP at Resolve 1 is actually going to be a 16, and it's going to be a 32 at max level. Uh, this is very low. This is technically starting lower than the Antiquarian, however, at every level interval, the Shinobi goes up 4 HP, whereas the Antiquarium would only go up 3. Uh, so his HP actually kind of catches up to the pack a little bit, uh, but still 32 is on the low side uh, for max level as well. I can I consider this very low, but um, as long as you have an adequate healer in your party or someone who can guard him, maybe he's perfectly fine. Uh, the dodge is actually going to be a 15 at opening resolve. And this is going to progress by 5 each level to a 35 at max level. Uh, this is great. I mean, this is the top of the line as far as the normal classes go. Uh, the Jester is the only other one with this same progression, and he never complains about dodging. Uh, the Prot is 0. Uh, the Speed is going to start at an 8 at Resolve level 1, progress to a 9 at Resolve 3, and then progress to a 10 at 5th Resolve. Um, this is top of the line speed in the normal game. Uh, it's tied with the Grave Robber, uh, so he's going to get a lot of outspeeds. Um, he's a very good unit for that, and, and if you want him to be even more reliable, just give him a speed trinket and see what happens. So, accuracy is a zero, as you would expect. The crit is actually going to be a six at opening resolve, and progress all the way up to a ten at final resolve. This is, uh, this is a great crit percentage. Um, it's tied for top of the line with Grave Robber and Shield Breaker. Uh, so he's going to get a ton of crits, and you'll notice that a lot of his attacks also have some crit bonus going around. Uh, he is a very good crit fishing build. And finally we get to the damage. At uh, opening resolve his damage is 4 to 8, and at max level his damage will be an 8 to a 14. This is a hybrid progression. Um, for the first three levels he progresses in damage exactly like a Vestal would, and then he will outpace that and progress for level 4 and level 5 like a man-at-arms would. Um, I'm going to consider this uh, average damage because it's right in between that backline, frontline damage, uh, middle line basically. He's right, he's right there. So without any further ado, let's go straight into the combat skills. With the first one, Ascending Cut. Ascending Cut is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3 and can target rank 1 or 2 enemies. This is a melee attack that will move the shinobi forward 1 rank. Has an accuracy base of 105, does full damage, and has a crit mod of plus 7%. This will get an additional 15 accuracy against marked targets. You probably won't have a lot of trouble with his accuracy, uh, because even at beginning level I believe this is a 95 accuracy kind of move. So. Um, He's not going to miss often, but this is going to pretty much guarantee hits on even those really dodgy characters um, if they're marked. So that, that is a helpful bonus there. And Sending Cut is a very good um, generic attack from the Shinobi. The second combat skill, Backbiter. Backbiter is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3 and can target rank 3 or 4 enemies. 
It's a melee attack that will pull the shinobi back one rank. It has an accuracy base of 100, a damage modifier of negative 20%, and a crit mod of plus 8%. This is going to bypass guard, which is great, um, and it's going to have a plus 1000% crit if target HP is below 30%. So you're going to have a real high crit chance if these guys are really low health uh, with this move especially. And you're going to also receive a scaling bonus plus 40% damage while stealthed. So Backbiter is, is really good with his stealth kit. Um, and that's probably, it's a good generic move um, if you are planning to be stealth most of the combat. Um, and we'll get into uh, other ways to get him stealthed uh, after we get through his moves. Third combat skill, Grappling Chain. Grappling Chain is usable from rank 3 or 4, and can target any ranked opponent. It's a ranged attack that will pull the shinobi forward two ranks. This has an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 40%, and a crit mod of plus 4%. This is going to mark the target you select, and this will buff the shinobi plus 15% crit for a limited time. There is a trinket you can add to him later to add to this uh, the rounds that you can buff his crit for. Um, and that's pretty helpful if you really want this buff to last all battle. Um, otherwise, this is a very good way to uh, set up for a powerful attack. Fourth combat skill is Binding Jutsu. This is usable from rank 3 or 4, and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 enemies. It's a ranged attack, with an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 70%, and a crit mod of plus 4. This is going to inflict bleed with 120% base. That's that's pretty average as far as the bleed, uh, as the bleed triggering amount. It's going to be for 3 points a round for 3 rounds, which is pretty potent. And this could also stun the enemy for 110% base, uh, which is a little bit lower than the average, but doing both is actually very, very potent. So he's good in that regard as well. The fifth combat skill is Shuriken Toss. It's usable from rank 2, 3, or 4, and can target rank 1, 2, and 3 enemies at the same time. This is a ranged attack that will pull the shinobi back one rank, has an accuracy base of 95, a damage modifier of negative 70%, and a crit mod of minus 2%. Uh, this is the only negative one we've run across so far, as far as crit is concerned, uh, but that is pretty much standard fare, as this is an AoE attack. This is going to inflict Blight at 120% base for 3 points a round for 3 rounds on all 3 of those targets. Um, that's pretty good. Uh, I think that's pretty much on par with... Uh, a lot of the AoE status inflictors in the game. So this is a pretty good coverage move, especially if you want to play the Blight game. Uh, this is very good for that. The sixth combat skill is Coup de Gras. It's usable from rank 2 or 3, and can target rank 1, 2, or 3 enemies. This is a melee attack with 105 accuracy, damage mod of negative 30%, a crit mod of plus 6%. Now this attack is going to have additional features depending on the status of your target. Uh, if the target is bleeding, or blighted, or marked, you're going to receive it a bonus 40% damage. That does scale with your level. Um, I believe the one's only one level up it has an extra 5. Yeah. So I believe it's going to max out at plus 50% for all of those, which is pretty potent, especially if you are using uh, a few of them. And then you're going to also receive plus 1,000 crit versus stunned enemies. So overall, this move is a very good synergistic move if, you're, if the rest of your party has bleed and or blight, or marks targets, or even just has the occasional stun you'd like to toss out. This is very good for... Um, finding those stacking bonuses to get you the biggest result possible. Obliterated. And the seventh combat skill is Shadow Cloak. 
This is usable from any rank, and he'll target himself. There is a cooldown with this move of three rounds. You won't be able to select it for three rounds. Um, and you are going to buff yourself. You're going to give yourself stealth for three rounds. And while you are stealthed, you're going to receive bonuses to your speed of plus three, and to your damage, a solid plus four damage boost. Um, that's going to take your damage from what I consider to be average to the actual base damage. It's going to go up to pretty comparable to like a Crusader, actually. Um, so that's actually not bad at all. Um, and you're going to get some decent returns on this. So if you want to set up stealth, this is the way, the primary way. There are some trinkets that can give you some backup there um, that we'll talk about later as well. Alright, real quick, let's go through his camping skills. He's gonna have generic, encourage, wound care, and pep talk, as you'd expect. And uh, the first of his unique camping skills is low profile. Low profile is time cost 3. This will reduce your chance the party is surprised by 4 battles, as well as prevent nighttime ambush. This is a very good thing um, for prevent nighttime ambush because it's cost 3. Uh, that That's pretty much... it's hard to obtain, but a lot of these unique classes sometimes have this for 3 cost. But it's also going to give you that minus 30% chance the party is surprised bonus, um, and that's especially good if you're going out at dark comps. Um, so he's very good for stealth in that regard as far as exploring, and uh, you know, I pretty much always take this. The second camping skill, Scout Ahead. It's time cost 3, and you were gonna give yourself a bonus of plus 25% scouting chance for 4 battles. So this is good if you are uh, not getting scouts very lucky with your current comp or whatever it might be. Like, a lot of times I like to go out with at least one trinket that has a scouting boost on it. But if you can't manage that yet, or if you don't have one yet, another good way around it is to camp before you would normally want to, and then use this real quick. The third camping skill is Ambush Plan. It's a time cost 4 camping skill. You are going to increase the chance monsters are surprised by 30% for 4 battles, and the party is going to get some buffs. Plus 20% crit while stealthed for 4 battles, plus 20% damage on first round for 4 battles. This is very good for um, getting the edge over your opponents. That first round damage is very, very important, and it stacks real well with a lot of... Um, like if you have an AoE first round option on a lot of people, maybe you like to impale round one with a shield breaker, or uh, with the shinobi themselves, maybe you want to start with a shuriken toss. Um, that's not a bad way to do this, and the bonus to crit while stealth can work really well in specific groups. You can use this for... Um, uh, Senawa comes to mind, because she can stealth pretty much the entire party but herself, and she's a repost class, so that means lots of repost synergy as well. Um, so it's actually really good with stealth parties. And the final camping skill is Tools Maintenance. This is time cost 2. You're going to give the shinobi some buffs, plus 10 accuracy for 4 battles, and plus 5% crit for 4 battles. So, uh, beyond that, there's a couple things we need to discuss about the shinobi still. His crit effect is going to give him stealth for one round. So when he crits, he's going to stealth himself until the next action he takes. So that's very good um, on this class especially, um, and it's going to give you bonuses, especially if you're going to kit to giving yourself buffs for stealth. Um, if you're using Shadow Cloak, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to be pretty potent. Uh, if you're looking for backbiter attacks, you're going to get lots of damage out of that. Um, and beyond that, there are trinkets you can have to help you stealth as well when your attacks land. Other than that, party composition-wise, just keep in mind he's going to sincerely benefit from any guard units if you want to throw him that way, um, but he's also going to benefit from a good healer more than most classes would, because if he takes a hit, he's a lot lower on that HP than most classes would be. So if you've got a very potent single-target healer, he, he will really appreciate that. Uh, Vestal works just as well, it just takes a couple turns if you're using the AoE heal options. And now, as far as quirks, 
are concerned. Um, he he's he's an interesting one to build quirks for, um, and it basically is going to boil down to what your normal priorities are, uh, because he's got great stats in dodge and speed and crit. He's got a pretty good damage modifier, so that's pretty good to uh, add to as well. Uh, the only thing that is low by default is his HP. So you can pretty much choose anything you want to buff through those quirks, and he's already going to have a pretty good baseline to start from. Uh, for me, I think his best things are going to be to make that dodge from pretty good to godly. Uh, so buff that dodge as much as you can. Um, Luminous is great. Corbett's Grace is great. Uh, if you can't get either of those, uh, Evasive will work in a pinch, I believe. I got that with you. Yeah. And then other than that, you'll notice that he's got melee and ranged options all the way across. So, actually, Deadly is not a bad one to lock, because it's not going to be melee crit or ranged crit. Um, or you can basically, if you can work your, uh, your total choices for your combat skills to be primarily melee or primarily ranged, then you can basically go with those versions of crit bonuses as well. Other than that, if you focus on his damage, crit, and dodge, I think he's probably best served with those three. So let's go into his trinkets real quick. Um, this class comes with ten trinkets. My apologies, I don't have most, well, probably about half of them, I would guess. Uh, but we'll go through what I do have. We'll start here with the Jagged Blade. This is going to add 20% damage versus bleeding targets, but in exchange it will reduce 20% damage versus not bleeding targets. And on a melee attack hit, you are going to cause bleed at 130% base, two points a round for three rounds. This is not bad if you were going out in bleed comps. I almost equipped this, um... On the shinobi I'm going to go out into a dungeon with. Actually, I don't think I did. Actually, I have one too many trinkets on you anyway. I actually almost equipped that on the one I'm going to go out in a dungeon with, but I decided to go another way this time. The second trinket we're going to go over is the barbed dart. This is going to change grappling chain to give you plus one more round of that buff duration. And that buff is a rather large crit buff. Uh, so adding an old round to that being on your on your unit is actually really cool. Uh, it's also going to give you a plus two speed. In exchange, you're going to lose three percent of your base crit. Uh, I find this is well worth it, especially if you rarely don't use grappling chain. So it's a good setup move. I'm going to try it out in the dungeon here in a bit. Uh, the next one we're going to go over is the silver needle. This is going to give you 50% armor piercing and plus 10 accuracy. In exchange, you're going to lose 2 off your damage outright. Um, so this is... It's going to weaken him a bit, turn him into more of a backline damage dealer. Um, normally. But if you were using Shadow Cloak, you can pretty much make up for that minus 2 damage uh, just by turn 1 Shadow Cloaking. Uh, so this is not bad if you're going to use that kind of thing, you, you barely lose anything that way. Um, otherwise, it's significantly debuffing your damage, but that armor piercing is going to already make up for a good ton of it. If you're going out into a place with a lot of prot, uh, this might be a good change-up to equip on him. Next one we're going to go over is the Faded Scarf. This is going to add 10 to your dodge if your HP is above 50%. Now, if you've got a really good healer, you'd be surprised how often you can get this to be affecting him. Um, you can just keep his HP up, and it's like your 10 dodge never goes away. Um, I personally like to uh, use the camouflage cloak during the highlight instead, but this is also a good way to keep your dodge um, fed. And the last one I've got here, before I go to the ones I, have, I am equipping, is the Occult Eye. This is going to ignore stealth on enemies, which is great, and this is also going to reduce the chance that the party is surprised by 15%. This is very good, uh, this is very good at medium level dungeons, uh, medium difficulty dungeons rather, and uh, especially good if you're going out in the dark, because that chance party surprise can be a problem. 
Um, so, if you're not getting scouts, or if you're going out in the dark, this is a very good trinket to kind of uh, balance that out for you. And the last of the trinkets for him that I actually own is the calm trinket, Husking Bomb. It's going to add 30% to your Blight skill chance while you're stealthed. Your Blight resistance is going to go down by 100, which is pretty intense. But the real kicker here is, when you use a friendly skill, the enemy group is going to Blight 3 points around for 3 rounds. So, he's only got the one friendly skill, um, and this is kind of what you expect when you have uh, trinkets that have this friendly skill use line in it. Uh, what, what, what it's saying is, when you use Shadow Cloak, it is now going to, on top of its normal benefits, have a chance to blight the entire enemy line. Um, so that's actually really good, especially if you're going to start round one with Shadow Cloak, um, which will show off in the dungeon, but I think primarily I first want to grappling chain and show what that uh, buff duration looks like after that. But... Let's see, we didn't have a lot of choices as far as, like, medium-level dungeons that aren't going to kill my players. So we're actually going to... It's not going to matter going after the Siren here, but that's what we're choosing. Bring some of those in case. We are going to need some blood. Oh, man, I need to stock up. We're going to bring two in case. In financial desperation, we don't need to stick around for any of this. I always wondered what became of the unfortunate little waif. The unfortunate little waif. Alright, we're gonna go where the battles are. Uh, I don't really care that this is a dead end. I think there'll be enough battles over here. Alright, someone's hungry. I can't believe you went first. Okay, cool. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna nail bomb. His whole point is is to be setting bleed on as many folks as we can. Uh, we are actually going to alter stratagem, and I'm going to mark everybody, even though it doesn't last very long. That should do. Now, I'm going to grappling chain. There's no real point I'd for the mark, but we're going to do it anyway. I don't think I have the right move set on him. No, Coup de Gras just is only usable from the middle ranks. Oh, my bad. Okay. Well, I don't really need to stun you specifically. Let's get rid of you, you. I haven't used your turn yet. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so we got... We got a mark on all these guys and a bleed on two-thirds of them. So that's pretty good. Alright. We're gonna, we're gonna feed you a little blood. Tired of this. Okay, coup de gras should do really good against the marked and bleeding target. We're gonna we're gonna eliminate you. Their formation is broken. Maintain the offensive. I'd like to heal you. The wounds of war can. Now the reason my plague doctor is so potent is um, because of the mods I'm using. If you have any questions about that, just ask me in the comments. I'd be glad to share what mod that is. But the Plague Doctor's pretty good with it. Okay, I want to go back and just give an extra turn to you. Okay, we got Bleed and Mark on both these guys now, so let's just finish them off. Press this advantage. Give them no quarter. Beautifully done. Beautifully done. As All right. victories mount, so too will oh, I didn't highlight the actual buff duration that trinket son of a bitch. I guess I'm gonna keep that start going another time. Uh, I think I'm gonna be better off with something like that for now. Although if we're not using this yet, let's go here. The match is struck. A blazing storm. Oh no, we're not in proper born. order. Oh god. Fucked up everything. It'll probably still be okay. I just won't be able to set bleed. Oh 
Wow, really makes me wish I had that trinket to see through invisibility. Yay! But we are going to do this. Turn order, save my ass. So I am allowed to use Nail Bomb. Still got two out of three. Not bad. Got all six on him, though. We don't have a damn thing to use from that front rank. Oh, man. Oh, no. We're gonna go to here. That is not how you show them off. Everything in the wrong order? No. My god. Not how you do it. Alright, this should end the stealth of both those assholes. Cool. I'm gonna give another turn to our dear Shinobi. Oh no! You don't want it! Oh no! Okay, well I guess I'm gonna frantic flurry you. I don't use that move as much as I should. <laughs> Why? Why? Alright, I get bonus damage while stealthed. Unfortunately, I'm not stealthed. Confidence surges as the enemy crumbles. But I did kill him. For the backstab. Please? There we go. There we go. Alright, let me end you. Not quite, huh? That was not where I clicked. I mean, my mouse is still there. Death by oh my god. I can't believe I fucked that up. I need to slow down a bit. Monstrous size has That'll no have to work. Intrinsic merit. Unless oh well, you know what? We're gonna, we're gonna change up entirely. Uh, backbiter's good for this. Um, that moves you back. That moves you back. The Grot does not move you in any direction. So I'm actually just going to put you in rank 2 and call it good. Secrets and wonders can be found in the most tenebrous corners. Not that we this need place. this. I guess I'm just grabbing it. Another fight? Oh, we gotta go quite a ways from the fight. Alright, fight number three. Let's go. We could have done that. I'll use it to stress heal later. It's not a big deal. In Radiance, may we find victory. All right, I'm gonna start with Shadow Cloak. Wait. Oh, I completely missed. I'm gonna have to do it with. Uh... I completely missed that it, this is buffs anybody. You select a target. Well, I'm gonna use myself. Stating blow. Another one falls. Oh no, not the front. Oh, I can't even use Backbiter from here because of invisibility. God damn it.
He's just a little cray cray. Not a big deal. Compassion is a rarity in the fever pitch of battle. Give him another turn. I'm super stealth, yo. Alright, well let's do this because I can hit them all. Continue the onslaught. Oh Destroy my god. Them all. Butchered. Absolutely murdered. Let's go speed one around. Let's see speed one around. Nah, no, it's not bad. Well, unfortunately, um, I, I did not know that I could use Shadow Cloak on anybody. That changes its use, especially if you're using this being the only friend's friendly skill he's got. You can, like, literally repeat giving a different person stealth every round and getting more blight on your enemies while you do it. Uh, so that's actually pretty interesting. Uh, that might be a worthwhile thing to try out as well. Uh, but overall, this is kind of how you use the Shinobi. There are obviously a lot of tools here to work with, and the Shinobi's a great class to have fun with. So you should try it out today. Uh, give it a shot on the workshop while you're there. Again, sorry this video is a little bit late. I've been having a hectic schedule, and I'm just a little under the weather today. So, bear with me. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. We've got another guide coming up, Stratter Day. Anyway, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.